part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwell, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast, now part of the Press Play Podcast Network. We're dedicated to all things related to DC Comics with a strong focus on Superman and all things Kryptonian. We discuss movies, TV shows, games, and of course, comic books. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow, and with me is Mr. James Cole, the Superman of Red, the Man of Steel himself. Welcome, James. Hey, what's going on, Tyler? It's actually nice here in Ohio. It's weird. I'm scared. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> like I'm, I'm just I'm in this fearful state of what are you going to do to me, Ohio? Like, because <laughs> it's it's finally done that change where this like my sinuses are jacked up thanks to all the weather, um, but it's finally done that change where the sun is rising in the morning like it's supposed to and staying out later. So I feel like I got more time. Like it was. We slept with the windows cracked last night, so I woke up to hearing the birds chirping outside, and I'm just like, ah, oh, this is, this is nice. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably have this well, fire. I forgot to close. Turn back on by the end of the week. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to turn on the, uh, or close the windows last night downstairs. So, you know, came downstairs. It was all. Um, Nice and cool. I'm hoping that maybe I can save money this month on my energy bill by not having to have the heat or the air on. Because yesterday, I just had the windows open and all the ceiling fans going, which don't use as much energy. And it was nice. So Yes, sir. I'm like, please, stay nice. Stay classy, Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it's a very nice weekend. Very warm. Um, 83 yesterday, I was out mowing the grass. And, and then I got called into work, so I only got one section of my yard done. <laughs> oh, man. I bet your lawn, bet your lawn looks funny. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's one... So it's it's the side yard, so it's from the drive all the way up to the the sidewalk and over to the the side drive. So it's it's like a complete section is done, but then the front isn't mowed. So mm, mm. somebody drives by, they're like, "I don't know why why the hell they stop halfway." Controlled mowing. Yeah, we like to make a flow of our mow. <laughs> Nice, <laughs> but uh, you know, I both I mowed the grass the other day on Friday evening, and it's been a heck of a week for me. So, health, some health issues, and getting old sucks, but everybody's doing it. <laughs> but everybody's doing it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, let's talk some DC fun. We got some uh, interesting stuff up here. Not too much news, but a few little minor things. We got a new, wait, hold on. I'm going to say this one first. The other ones are all kind of the same. So it's being reported that um, Shazam is prepared, uh, Black Adam is preparing to do some reshoots and additional footage here in like a couple weeks. At the same time, it's being said that Shazam will also be doing some reshoots and additional footage. Mm, coincidence? Hey, that rhymes with Joe Winston. <laughs> um yeah i mean that's that's really it's it's curious you know um both movies are due out later this year um so i mean i i seriously doubt that it's going to be like a um extensive thing but maybe just one it, scene yeah yeah um some maybe some tie tie in stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't, I mean, we know now that, um, 
over there at Warner Brothers Discovery, they want they want DC to be more of its own cohesive tier. So, I mean, just just to build things around that, you know, there there needs to be a little more connective tissue um, because they totally they totally got away from it. Um, I mean, I, I think I think me and you are in the same boat when we um, when we think about DC where it, where it's come that um, the idea that they were embracing the multiverse um, was just a, was just a, uh, a line to get them to not have to make things, um, work fit, <laughs> fit. Yeah. Work fit cohesively together, at least like the majority of the projects. I think it was their, their way of saying we can make, you know, whatever original, um, DC content, we want and it doesn't have to connect because it's in the multiverse it's like well pretty much they're just- there there is still a there is still a, a prime area there is still earth zero there is still earth prime there is still earth one you know like there is there is subsections that connect there is still an overall continuity that people want to see we want outliers in the multiverse that don't connect, but I think I think the overall consensus consensus would be we would rather a continuity that that continues to build and grow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and I think they I think they just use that as a line to say, you know, we don't need to build a continuity because it's the multiverse. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. So it, it's, it sucks that that's kind of the approach that we get um, just because it, yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, I get that. You want to do the multiverse. No problem. But at the same time, when you mix multi, when you mix your multiverse up or you don't have even your multiverse straight, it's a problem. When you're just saying that, but then you're like, wait, well, that doesn't line up with what that earth should be or that should be. Where are we? Yeah. So, um, I don't mind a few multiverse things. Like, I don't mind that we have the Batman doing its own thing, as well as having um, a in story kind of Batman story, um, connective Batman. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, a, a good a a good idea that has come from it obviously is the idea that that Keaton's coming back you know we get to see Flash um, we get to see um, Ezra Miller's Flash interacting with Michael Keaton's Batman which is something you know nobody ever thought we'd we'd see um, Keaton's Batman interacting with anyone yeah. So, I mean, there I'm sure that some good ideas have sprung from from this. It's but not, we not, already we already know as a whole since since I mean 2013, but 2016, since 2016, since the day freaking critics were split on Batman versus Superman. You know, that every time something happened, it was a knee jerk reaction. They kept changing the plan over and over and over again. And then they sold and then they restructured people in the places. And then they sold again. Like nothing has been, nothing has been um, cohesive. Nothing's been set. Nothing's been building in over six years. The only thing that's really been building is like we just talked about is potentially the Shazam movies. <laughs> With yeah, Batman. and it's uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I mean, it's a head scratcher because you have, you know, we did the crisis, right? We had Ezra Miller appear on Crisis, so that has to factor in with everything. If you're a continuity snob like I am, we also had Alexander Knox from Batman '89 appear on Crisis. <laughs> we 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 learned that there, you know, there's a Doom Patrol in the Titans universe, but then there's another Doom Patrol on its own Earth. Um, and, you know, they they 
talked about that, but they cemented that in crisis. So it just, after a while, it just gets to be a head scratcher when they start mixing up people. And that's why I'm so interested in the flash movie um, because of the whole Keaton, uh, Jim Gordon being who it is, the Batmobile that we saw on set. I have my theories, but you know, that movie's too far off to really talk about. Um, but you know, if they, if they're getting their crap together, that's all we care about. We, cause we want more content. We're enjoying what we're getting, but we want more. Yeah. I, I think we, I think we're both in agreement there. We just want some, um, I mean, we've enjoyed a lot of what's come out, you know? Um, I mean, even the suicide squad, but I think is made better because of the show peacemaker because of actually, you know, broadening the scope, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I mean, I, I have the discussion, uh, all, all the time about movies and I mean, like particularly some movies that have come out recently that are pretty long, Zack Snyder's justice league and the Batman. Um, I love when, when these stories and these characters that we love are expanded upon where the world grows around them. Yeah. And it's hard to do when it's like, Oh, this is a different universe. Um, (coughs) well, that sucks. Right. You feel cheated. Um, so yeah. So it's, it's like, um, it's like that, how, how it should have ended. You're not even supposed to be here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what are you doing here yeah. uh, did you watch that one yet yeah okay yeah okay. I, uh, it was pretty freaking hilarious it was awesome <laughs> what was awesome it was, it was way better than the last one. Oh yeah totally was um what i liked about it was <laughs> we, we pulled it up and we're like we're trying to get like dinner ready and we're gonna watch it because solomon loves watching him with me yeah. We'll get on like huge, like how it should have ended bins and we'll just go back and find old ones. And Brian pulled up right as we were sitting down. So, we go, oh, we'll just wait for Brian. So, Brian came inside and we all just sat there and watched it together and was like, this was, this was pretty good. This one was. At first, I was like, okay, you're just going to use this one joke over and over. But uh, then I was like, okay, this one was pretty good. So, <laughs> one of my, one of my, um, funniest one of the funniest parts of it i I laughed again just thinking about last night because you know i I was watching it the the movie and um you know he he's gliding and then he you know he eats shit and he he rolls (laughs) and he rolls and and then he looks like a family guy got a person who just crashed and tumbled over and Uh was all broken and beaten he was like ah (laughs) man i watched the behind the scenes of how they made that, like they, they they invested a lot of like energy and time into doing that wingsuit shot. Like they shot like four different locations, to, and seeing how they did it, I was just like, "Wow, that's cool!" But was it really worth all that? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, it's so fast, and you're just like, "Oh, this is cool!" Like, they used a drone, they used um, two different locations, and then they did like a special on set. Um, of how they actually shot him flying. I'm just like, that's cool, but man. <clears throat> right. Um, Cause I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, Hey, you want to know my secret identity? <laughs> oh, that's great. You, you know why? Don't say it. I know you're going to say it. Don't, don't, because I'm Batman. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I, uh, I actually can't wait to to check that out after after we're done and put it on and show Jamie. I told her about it when we were watching last night because when, like I said, when he hit the when he hit the bridge, I just started laughing. She was like, "What?" And I gave her a little description, <laughs> and I said, "We'll we'll check that out tomorrow after after you've seen the whole thing." <laughs> Brian was like, "Because I'm Brian." <laughs> Like, yeah, I think that's a whole totally different situation, though. You know, <laughs> I think that comes I'm, because I'm Brian. I think that would come out in totally different situations than because I'm Batman. You would think. <laughs> right. 
Uh, the other big thing we got was we got a new poster for Superman and Lois, um, which was cool. <laughs> then we got the Bizarro version of the poster. So that was cool. We had a... I always, like, when they do these CW posters, sometimes I'm just like, they look overly photoshopped. Um, and this one actually looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, granted, they are overly photoshopped, but um, I think, I, I, but they're also kind of simple mm-hmm. because it's just the family standing there um, posing and, you know, looking off and into the ether. And, but, uh, yeah, to see the flip, the Bizarro one, it's pretty cool. I like it. I'm wondering if there's something wrong with like Bizarro Clark, if he's like been poisoned or something. That's why he's white because no one else is white and everything, just him. So I wonder if we're going to learn like something's happening to him. He's dying, rotting or something. Right. And then we got the last, the titles of the final episodes of Superman and Lois. So the episode we're coming back to is going to be episode 11, correct? Um, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yes, sure. I believe so. Yes, that's the um, Bizarro. Bizarro's on a bizarre world. Or some, yeah. Something like that. So number 12 is Lies That Bind. Number 13 is All Is Lost. Number 14 is World War Bazaar. And number 15 is Waiting for Superman. And that is... Last one sounds like a music, uh, like a like a, a, a song title. It is. Chris Dodger's, is it? Chris Dodger's gonna bust in like, Waiting for Superman! <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just like Superman's gonna be fighting. He's gonna be in the background strumming his guitar. Like, ah! And they're gonna be like, Chris, Chris, bring it down, buddy. <laughs> now he, they actually had him on set. You're gonna see Chris Daughtry in the background. Oh yeah, Superman flying by and he's strumming his guitar. Like that one comic. <laughs> like what was it at the end of the super, the run where the musician was playing and Superman and Lois flew off? Yeah. That's how it's going to be. It's going to be like in, uh, at, we'll see Bizarro, Chris Daughtry. We'll see him like outside the diner there in Smallville. We'll see him on the feet in the fields and every, everywhere she is, he's just in the background playing like his own little balladeer, just saying <laughs> the same lines over and over, like waiting for Superman. Uh. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Somewhere Chris Daughtry's at home, like someone's talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you know, side note, that Chris Daughtry is a big Batman fan and actually is a good yes. artist? And I told that to Brian the other day when we were talking because I was talking about how I miss uh, I miss old Fat Man on Batman back when it was just Kevin Smith talking with people about Batman in like the intimacy of just being in a studio, not like filming and making his fat man beyond and everything it is now. Like I, I don't even listen to it anymore, but that was my favorite podcast. And I remember listening to when Chris Daughtry was on there talking and I was like, wow, I have respect now for Chris Daughtry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all the news I got. Um, you got anything more? Uh, no, no, not that I can think of. Um, it's it's been pretty slow. It's been pretty slow going news wise. Um, it's just all been speculation you know, pretty... and rumor, and I'm not I'm not going down those rumor mills, and I'm not and I'm not. Oh going, yeah, and I'm not diving into like the <laughs> real world of like a lot of the what the actors are up to. Eh. Right? About, no, that. it's just I, I think I think we're we're not getting any news because it's this merger time. It's um they're they're reviewing what they have. Um, coming down the pipeline and, and, and what they, I think they're going to, and, and they're restructuring, you know? So it'd be, it'd be just stupid to put out news if something on that front changes. 
Yeah. You know, kind of like Warner Brothers did for the last six years. Hey, let's, hey, let's throw out all of our slate and then let's change it. In the entire April. thing. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, let's make them think we're doing stuff. Yeah. We're going to put out we're going to put out 10 movies in the next 6 years and they put out two of them. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do like four different Harley Quinn movies with the Joker. We got a Cyborg, a Green Lantern, we got everything you want. 9 years later, the Flash movie comes out next year. I'm Batman. <laughs> because I'm Tyler. Oh man. Uh yeah. I hear you. All right. So let's jump into getting back to why we all love this stuff. Comics. Hey, we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to The Krypton Report. Now here we are with comics. This week, what do you want to start with? We got it. We got a couple, of, like two new ones, and then we got a few more in the back catalog to check up too. Which one we'll start with, James? Um. Well, you know, why don't you grab something from from the back catalog there, and I'll bring it up. Well, we got the dark. We got so we're gonna kind of catch up a little bit with. Uh, we talked about Dark Knights of Steel just because. We probably should have just waited and done this whole thing as one episode, but we're stupid and we already did a few of the issues, so we're going to have to pick up where we left off, even though... Uh, I was just going to say, you know what? Screw it. Go back over all, all six of them. Do a, do a midway, like, what's going on? What do we think's happening? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can. So we're, let's talk Dark Knights of Steel. All right, so issue one. I'll go over quickly. Let me hear. Ready, ready, everybody. That beautiful sound. Opening the plastic. Giving the book out. We know that basically Krypton explodes. Go figure. They crash on the Earth. It's medieval times, and on Earth, um, it's Lara Jor- and Jarrell, and she gives birth on Earth to Kal El. Fast forward. We learn that. Uh, the Kingdom of Storms is a person, the Green Man, and that Constantine's basically a prophet for the king who is Black Lightning. Uh, 19 years later, in the castle of El, Batman is basically the head knight, hunter. He kills anything that has to do with magic. Um, there's Prince Kal-El. He has his own little force, the Robins, and we have Duke and Richard. We also have Stephanie and I'm trying to see if it confirmed who the other one, if it's Tim or Jason. But I'm fairly certain it was Jason. He hunts at the beginning. He's hunting uh, Dinah. And Prince Kal-El shows up. We have Royal Jester <laughs> Harley <laughs> Quinn. Um, of course, Alfred is Bruce's loyal servant. And we know there's a history. Um, and then at the end, Jarrell is trying to talk and confess to Bruce about something. Bruce talks about he believes he is cursed. We see, um, yeah, because he takes the canary scream to the face. Yep. Meanwhile, in the forest is Green Arrow, who gets an arrow charged by what looks like a Green Lantern ring. Um, we find out that Bruce is Jarrell's son, and then Jarrell takes a basically kryptonite arrow into the eye and falls down. 
and that, or a magic arrow. Or a magic two. arrow. And that's the quick summary of the first issue, which we reviewed more thoroughly several uh, episodes ago. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's that rundown for issue two. <clears throat> Issue two is picks up right where the other one left off. Bruce is angry. He has a little bit of heat vision popping. Um, the queen runs in. So does Prince Kellel. Bruce and Alfred get on horses and go looking for Bruce's quick. He catches an arrow, fights Green Arrow. Now we're back at the Kingdom of Storms. We see the mage Constantine talking to. The, uh, the green person, the green man. We meet uh, that King Black Lightning has children, and they're testing their powers. He talks with Mage Constantine. They try to have a an intervention, saying that the other kingdom did not plot to kill. Um, but it's time for war. It's being called. Then we go to the Amazon Island. We meet Hippolyta and Diana. And Diana's training with a new character, Zala. Jorel's daughter. Jorel and Lara's daughter. Which Superman having a sister? Pretty cool. I don't lie. Um, yeah, and she's in a lover's relationship with Wonder Woman. Uh, so they're talking about war, and Diana, you know, can't do that. We see now uh, the prison, and this is what's interesting: is in the prison where Bruce has been capturing people, we have Blue Devil, the Flash. I'm not sure who the wing person is supposed to be. Uh, King Shark, Professor Chimp, and somebody <clears throat> else. Like um, maybe, maybe I'm Octavia. guessing the winged person is one of the characters that Tom Taylor created during his quick Suicide Squad run. Quite possibly. He created like Avery or something and um, Wink, something like that. Okay. He created a couple of characters there. And then we see Oliver Green Arrow is uh, in prison and has his arm cut, just like Luke Skywalker did, and just like uh, they did in The Dark Knight Returns. We're back at the kingdom where Black Lightning is looking for his child, his son, and we see his son being taken by Zala. She flies him into the... uh, sky and then drops him and then uh, he tries to shoot her with his black lightning and it doesn't work now that's that's a big point right there okay what Zala just did so let's uh, continue to move forward here I think do we ever really do number three um, you know what? I think we've actually, I think two was the last one we discussed. We might have, we might have talked about Because I remember we talked about, um, a theory that we've had, okay. or that we, either way, we'll, we'll talk about it when we, All right, so when we catch up. Crack out number three, James, you can take over here for a moment. And number <clears throat> three is, I, I'm, a, I, I'm such a big person on wanting to get, like, everything to look right. Number three bums me out because I have a variant cover. It's Superman in armor with the flag, which is cool. But at the same time, like I have all the regular covers, which I like for the other books. And I just hate that this one looks different. Uh, you might have to go out and pick yourself up a, an extra number three. <laughs> I know. <it's> up. <laughs> um, so we open up and something's shooting from the uh, shooting from the sky. A star is falling. Um, Paige fetched me a wrap. And what is it, Mister Olson? Nice little 
Jimmy Olsen line there. Um, Bruce and Alfred are discussing um, riding off to investigate, um, obviously, the assassination of the king. Um, they they have General Waller, yeah, which is which you know I mean can't can't really be good, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on her. But I mean they also have Court Jester Harley Quinn, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know what she's gonna do. Um, over here playing the tiniest violin. Uh, so they they ride off and um. We see the metal men. We've got we've got a nice uh, uh, troop of men here riding with different color armor, and it's it's really cool to see the uh, the metal men here. Mm-hmm. Um, they come upon Zala, and um, they're they're on. Um, I think they're on. Well, he says Magnus's land, um, so I'm guessing. He's either another king or <clears throat> or lord. Um, or not Duke, sure if he's or under count. the kingdom of storms or Viking yeah. or <laughs> baron. You know all those titles that we can't ever remember the hierarchy. It, yeah. Um, either way, I mean, is is he under? I'm guessing with the way they draw the sword on her that um, they may be under a rival kingdom, maybe underneath the banner of the storms. True, because like you said, he calls her a peasant. And I just want to point out that, <clears throat> like we've talked about multiple times, her name is Zala Zorel or Jorel. Like we talked about Kara Zorel and how females have the father's full name as their last name, kind of thing. Um, I do want to just appreciate that her name is Zala Zorel. Uh, yeah. Uh, I do like that. They, the so the metal men uh, draw their swords upon her, and she kills them. She kills them all. She um, lays waste. Yeah, <laughs> that that's the best way to describe it. Um, she annihilates them. Uh, then we're back to Amazon Island, where um, Lois is reporting that uh, the king, that King Jefferson, is is there and. Uh, that his son was murdered, and the this suspect is Zala. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think this is really cool that um, uh, King Jefferson, the first step he takes on onto the beach, off of the off of the stairs, he is um, uh, the the Amazons draw swords and hold them to his throat. Yeah, so he just needs to stay on the stairs because no man can set foot on the island. Yep. Um, I do like that Lois is there. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, and I do like how they have Lois in purple. Like that is that that is a pretty constant color for Lois mm-hmm. uh, across many mediums. <laughs> yeah, that's why they always give her like purple eyes and stuff. It's cool in comics. It would be weird in real life unless she was poisoned with kryptonite or something. <laughs> right. She's just like, I like him. I like my purple contacts. And then you know, he's telling him right here, like he said, they ask if he had jor killed. Um, and he says, I did. I couldn't ignore the threat they posed any longer. I had to act to save our world. <laughs> uh, Woo. Uh. Bless me. I tried to hit the mute button. I was too slow. Bless us all. For <laughs> Ohio, Ohio is now Ooh. bearing flowers because I had bees like crazy trying to get in my house yesterday. Oh, all the man. Flowers opening up. <sighs> Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon um, me. Thank you. See that, and that's and that actually, you know, is is more curious moving forward too. Um, because of what happened at the end of the last issue and what we're going to come up to. Um, exactly. <clears throat> because like he admits to having the uh, Jarrell murdered, and then he says, Zala killed my son. I'm sorry. like I- I've never had to ha- like have someone murdered before and then, then retaliate, but 
isn't that kind of balanced in a sense? Like you just killed her father, so he she killed your son. Like, right? Yeah, but, seems seems pretty balanced to me. But I mean, you can definitely tell Laura's pissed about it. Yeah, so, yeah, she's mad they killed it. They killed a Kryptonian. She's trying to tell us, but we, we don't speak, baby. And of course, Diana is you know like there's no way that Zala would do this. I'm gonna go and basically prevent war. And Hippolyta's like, no, this is treason, says Lois. And Hippolyta's <laughs> trying to stop her. And she takes off on a Pegasus, which is dope. And then I like the uh, King Jefferson ship. He's hanging out with Constantine. If you're hanging out with Constantine as your like, mage or like advisor, you're in trouble. You're already, oh, yeah. you're already in for it. Yeah, they, they really can't be a good sign. Both and 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 then Jefferson had him, and then Jefferson had the the king assassinated. So we kind of see who's the aggressors here. Yeah, and then look up in the sky. There's Zala. She attacks the ship and does a really cool like wind, water, typhoon through the ship. Then Jeff King Jefferson gets. Uh, a piece of boat <laughs> shrapnel shoved through his chest. Um, and then Jefferson is dying saying Anissa is queen. Uh, she'll need you, you know, fight. Meanwhile, in the land of Magnus, uh, Bruce is going with Alfred and they're looking and they find a, sh- a piece of kryptonite. Bruce is affected by it. And uh, and uh, Alfred basically, Bruce says, I think it affected me because of who I am. And Alfred's like, I know, I know, son. And it's time you learn the truth, Bruce. 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 <laughs> Time you learn the truth, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Time to learn the truth, man. Let's get you out of here. Same. <laughs> so that was it. Um, so now we're into issue four. Yeah, issue four. Uh, we open back up the lands of Magnus. Um, he is, Bruce is surprised. Uh, I was just beaten by a green rock. Um, now he knows how it feels. Um, I do have to point out that this issue kind of uh, made me a little sad because we do change artist, but the artist is not bad. I just really, really was digging the last artist who returns on the next book. So. Yeah, the last artist was was definitely um, a step up. Um, this is just that's, just that's in, bad... in my opinion. So, no, no, it's not bad at all. Um, it's it's just different, and I think part of that being because it's a flashback. Yeah. You know, kind of look different, take place in a different time. Yep. But it's, it's not horrible. I hate, I'm not, I'm trying to point that out. I've seen where they change artists and it's horrible, much like worlds of Krypton that we're going to get to in a special where we just go through the whole six issues. The inside art is atrocious. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I know I had told you about it before, how it was a mix of a couple of artists. Uh, seems like it's like the style is a mix of a couple of artists. And I was like, it appeals to me this way more than it does actually individually of those two other styles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, and it's not bad. It's just, it's just weird. weird. It's, it's too, too cartoonish for what you're, what you're for the content reading. I agree. It's kind of it's kind of like the only the only real complaint with um, Superman versus the Elite. Yep, I agree. Because the animation looks very cartoonish. Yep. But continue with such serious matter. Um, Issue four. Yeah. So he um, he decides to he's telling Bruce about um, the past. He's he saw the um, the ship come down, um, like. Uh, he it, when Alfred was younger, he saw the ship come down. Um, about how the elves, um, they uh, they just dis- they weren't in, they didn't want to interfere. 
Um, they, uh, they kind of, they built their own place out in the woods. Um, they could feel the tremors of the earth. There was, um, there's a Mount Kristoff, a, a volcano about to erupt and it's near, um, it's near the Wayne's kingdom. Um, Jor-El draws, uh, draws a way to save them. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, lets them know how to, uh, divert the, the lava away, the molten rock as, and, and relieve the pressure on the, the volcano. So it doesn't destroy the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Um, he hands it off to the, um, the palace advisor who is Alexander Luther. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who burns the papers, uh, burns it. Burns it, destroys it. Uh, what are you doing, Luther? Why haven't you evacuated? And um, Alfred's, what is he talking about? The mountain's about to explode. Um, is this true? Uh, no, I read the ancient records. It's always been angry and has never threatened us. I also consulted the stars. Um, Jarrell's kind of upset, you know, the stars. You asked burning gaseous balls for insight, you absolute idiot. Um, you know, I mean, it's, they're, they're living, living on a simple world on a, a simple earth. Um, and this is where they're like, we can save them, your majesty and Lara and Alfred draws his rapier. Stop there. And he talks about how Alfred would have done anything to protect him. And I like this. They say, what are you? And Lara says a friend. Uh, King Thomas, Queen Martha, I have watched you. I need to be good and kind, uh, but I needed you to protect something for us. It's all right, Jarrell. And they hand them uh, baby Kal-El and ask them to look after him, which I think is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really cool that that Laura. Um, I mean, like she said, she's she's watched them from a distance. Um, she trusts that they're good people. She leaves her baby with, uh, with Queen Martha. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and then Lara and, and Jor-El save the day, um, destroying, uh, destroying, uh, raining stone from the sky and, uh, using their heat vision and stuff to, uh, carve pathways to stop the, the lava from reaching the kingdom. Uh, Alexander Luther is, he's very mad <laughs> because he was wrong. Of course. Right. Luther was wrong and he is, he is heated. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it, as he's banished from the kingdom, he's walking, he comes upon a green meteorite and he approaches it to touch it. And then we see a green flame wash over him. Um, yeah. Which is very interesting. It doesn't look like it washes. It looks more like it burns over him. Like, ah! Yeah, I mean, he's screaming. Um, I mean, you can see his teeth. It looks like his lips are kind of like blown away. Um, his cheeks. It's, yeah. Like, it's it's a violent act, what happens to him. <laughs> it's interesting. They talk about, you know, they... Jarrell and Lara were friends, or heroes of the land, but they were feared by others. They brought so much knowledge from their world. They gave our kingdom so much. They gave us miracles, and they became the closest of friends to the Waynes and me. And then we cut back to Bruce and Alfred at their campfire, and Bruce is like, clearly, they became a lot more than friends, or I wouldn't be here. <laughs> right. Uh I, I I want you to know there was no malice in what they did. Jarrell may have been an alien, but he was all uh he was all too human. Martha, well, Jorel was a god and her husband gave all of himself to his kingdom. A single night, a single mistake. One that the the peop uh one that would hurt the people they loved so much. Um you can see Jorel uh hanging his head in the moment. Um for what he had done and uh, Thomas King Thomas pretty mad pretty upset 
Um, and it says, but then you were born and Thomas couldn't father children and the resentment he harbored faded as you grew. Thomas loved you as much as any father has ever loved a son and you, Bruce, you healed all wounds. And I liked it. <clears throat> I like the scene of the two, uh, fathers with their kids on their, um, on their shoulders as the kids are playing knights and stuff. Yeah. And then we yeah. see off to the side, Martha and, uh, Lara, I'm I'm just you know, uh, not sure if you know, um, you could come back from that. <laughs> like I don't know, it just seems like ah, oh, heal. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> hey man, you uh, you bang my wife, whatever. It's cool. <laughs> hey buddy, um, good job. And it's not like it's one of those where it's like Thomas was like went to him like I can't father a child. How about you give it a go for me? You know? Right. Like hey buddy. Uh, I need your help. Sure, man. What's up? Yeah, you know how I can't have kids. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I can't. Um, you mind just giving it a go with my wife and see if you can get me a child? Cause uh, I need one and I can uh, do it. Uh, we're friends, right? Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's <laughs> sure, buddy. it's bound to it's bound to have happened. <laughs> sure, buddy. It's a it's kind of an interesting favor. Hey, honey, what did uh? What the, what'd your, what King Thomas want when you stop by? Oh, you know, just ask for a favor. Oh, yeah. What, what, are you going to do it? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, what do you ask? Well, um, uh, he asked me to bang like, his wife for him. <laughs> right? Like, I, I was thinking about it, maybe considering it, but I really need to talk to you first. I really need to talk um, to you about this favor the king asked. No, honey, it's fine. Just do whatever he asks. He's your friend. It's all good. No, I really need to ask your permission, Lair. <laughs> you don't need my permission, husband. You're fine. I trust. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we see the we see the kids. Got Zala, Cal, and Bruce. They're all they're all in the trees. Um, Bruce, huh? How did they find us? Dad has super eyes. That's not fair. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny, you know. Being a kid with parents with super abilities, super hearing and sight and stuff, like, uh, yes, yeah, you, you couldn't get away with as much as as you as you you might want to as a child. And then we have so they're going on a carriage ride. Um. Uh, yeah, Tom. Um, it looks like all of them are maybe. Because, you know, we see the carriage attacked by a green beam. And we see, uh, it looks like Lara yelling, Martha. And because the, the person with the ring, who looks like basically the Joker, and we know who it is, we'll get there, says, Martha, whoops, wrong carriage. Um, I didn't know with he... A, with a big laugh. I didn't know he was still out there. I didn't know what the ring that burst from the... Mount Kristoff had been whispering in his mind. And then we see, nice. ha ha ha, it's basically Alexander Luther turned into the Joker with a Green Lantern ring. Not exactly sure why. Which is he scary. Uh, yeah. Which is a scary a, thought. Because he has a Green Lantern ring of will powered by kryptonite. Maybe. I well, know. I mean, <clears throat> well. We just see it as a Green Lantern ring. I mean, we're not sure of anything other than that's what it is. The only thing that seems to be is it was on Earth um, and in the mountain. It may be more like um, Alan Scott's ring. Could be, could be. Off of magic, not like the Green Lantern core. True, true. I like So that. that's that's my thought. I like it. I like it. Um, so yeah, definitely the magic against the Kryptonians would be, um, is dangerous as well as, I mean, this is a, a Joker, Lex Luthor, like, and I do like that, you know, there's Jarrell and he's like Thomas. I mean, like he goes flying up after Luthor, uh, uh, 
Um, and as Martha's dying, she says, Alfred, listen, bear witness. I have a final decree. Lair, I want you and Jorel to rule the kingdom. And she says, no, Bruce should be. And, um, you know, basically we have hidden Bruce's par parentage from our people, but they know he isn't Thomas' son. They will not accept uh, a bastard as their monarch. But they will one day because you will convince them. The people already love you. You are wise. You are strong. You are compassionate. They will welcome you as their new king and queen. And uh, Laris is holding her as she's dying. And above all, please look after Bruce. Love him for us. Um, so yeah, I it's not it's more like you said, just a Green Lantern ring than like kryptonite or anything. Yeah, um, you know Thomas is dead. He was incinerated by the blast, and yeah, um, Martha's dead. Bruce is unharmed. We because of him being, you know, half Kryptonian. And then Alfred and Thomas, uh, or Alfred and Bruce are talking about Thomas. And he, he says, you are Thomas and Martha's son. You're just something more. Uh, with Jarrell's murder, we are on the cusp of war, and only the survivor of a war will do anything to avoid that. Do you have a plan? No, but I have a king. To be continued. Yeah, yeah. So that was a nice little like jump backwards to find out what happened, and then uh, well, it's nice to find out what happened, how how the Waynes were killed in this this alternate world, this alternate timeline. And I'm and, you, uh, like, I know this run isn't even finished yet, but man, I'm like, go ahead and make this an animated two part movie. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, what they should have done with, with in, uh, Injustice. Let's not go down know? that road again. It's too <laughs> painful. It is. It, that, it that's very like, much is. Um, I bought that movie so pumped. And a little reprieve here. You know, we talked about this the other day. It's like, since that movie, there hasn't been a lot of talk. Like, they announced the next slate of movies. But usually we're getting tidbits about the animated films that's the constant you know we're getting three to four movies a year and we had that Catwoman come out but it felt like it was very like hush hush like it and I tried watching it I I couldn't do it it was I couldn't do it I did not like it it was, it was too anime-ish I didn't like the style or the voice cast just didn't sound right I just I couldn't do it it wasn't for me Grew up uh, but I tried yeah, I mean, I grew up watching um, more anime, and um, hey, pause it. I got work call. Sure, pause. So we got the Jenna Constantine Cross House of James. Uh, was well, a House of Mysteries that comes out in May, which yes. is a long short, which is an oxymoron, but you know what I mean. Much like they did with the Shazam, where they released the Shazam and Black Adam. Uh, short that was like 20 minutes and then put all the other shorts on it. The Constantine one's coming out and it's going to be like that. And then after that Right. It's supposed to touch on that. Which so we're highly exciting. anticipating because and it's, um, it's we'll, continuation we'll review it and talk about it like even, with, even with a short the universe fun, uh, to do. And then after that, we're supposed to get a Green Lantern. And then we're supposed to get the Super Sons one, which I'm excited for. And it's supposed to be computer-generated animation. It's supposed to be the first computer-generated animation that, that they've done. But we've gotten nothing from it. And usually, you know, every year, the way it used to work is uh, when one movie would come out, it would have the trailer for the next movie or a first look. And then um, in usually at Comic-Con in July is when they would announce the next year's or a first look. slate and we would get information. And, you know, we haven't had that. We got this at Fandome and I guess we've never got if we're going to get another Fandome or not. And it's kind of a bummer. I think that that's something they should have kept up with. But like we said, with the whole Discover merger right now, it's kind of everything's kind of hush hush. 
Well, hopefully if they're, I, I hope, because I really liked Fandom both years. Um, I, I really did. And I think it was, I think it was good. Uh, and I think it's important if they want to, to centralize kind of DC, that that would be a good thing to continue. Yeah, and then, like, I think this is our, do it, an actual this is our information somewhere. for, for everybody um, on DC once a year for like the next year or whatever. And I th- I, they just need a really good structure. Yeah, well, I love I love the fact that it's to, movies. It's been, uh, it was about the comics too. For, for it was year. it was really great. Really it was a nice good. silo for I DC. Think it off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that I want. I really want that Green Lantern movie. It's yep. uh, the, Green Lantern, beware my power, and. It's supposed yep, to be in the same continuity which, as Man of uh, Man, <clears throat> uh, Man of Tomorrow, um, the Long Halloween Justice Society. Okay, cool, cool, sure. I, I've I've seen online. Um, I just you know called the Tomorrowverse in the animated world there. So I want to see more um, from it. So and that's, then a, that's yeah, a nice shorthand the for it. Of the Long Halloween uh, physical as one movie. I've been digging it. I will buy. I will buy. I which, uh, yeah, which I'm very interested. To, I'm very interested to check out because I want to see it as one movie. Because when you watch it, if you watch the movie, the way the first part goes, the transition into number two, the funeral scene, post credits, I think. I think it'll flow much better as one movie than two parts. Yes, it does. I was being, uh, uh, my little Supergirl is awake and she's saying hi, my sweet, sweet Sayla. Now let's jump back. We've taken our tangent ride. <clears throat> I need some water to number five. James, take it away. Uh, the Kingdom of El, Lost Souls, Zala's Home. Um, uh, Our Father Deserves Justice. Um, uh, when did you hear two days ago? I'm sorry, I didn't come right there. Straight Pause. home. I've been searching for our the Father Green Deserves Man. Justice. Uh, you should not have done that alone. So, right there, just, say something has to I be. I couldn't up. just, I had to do something. Our Father Deserves Justice. That um, wasn't really. So, she up. says. Yeah, and exactly, and she Keep that and she mind, said she was listeners. in search of the Green Man, not that she went and, and murdered Jefferson's child. Um, yeah, uh, justice will be done. Um, out in Hobbs Forest, Harley Quinn is out there, and she comes across um, Pamela. She comes across Ivy. Um. She is, she's asking Ivy to be, to, for the force to be mm-hmm. a defensive line, um, to protect the kingdom. She's not interested in it. Um, but she is for Harley. Um, and she'll do it to protect it. Harley is, is what we got here. So yeah, definitely with the, um, Harvey, Harley Ivy love story. We called her a forest witch. Flying over the forest with her um, Pegasus, which is pretty awesome. Yes. I I like. I agree. Yeah, I like um, Diana's design. Um, I like the Amazon design. Uh, I feel sorry for the tree. Uh, yeah, stand aside for it. Switch and all the vines that are destroys a gigantic and tree and them. tries to hit them with it, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah, right. Which is awesome. Which, if you watched this um, 
like towards the end of part one, because like I said, we'll, we'll know next week or this week, um, with number six, we'll know a little more kind of see where the, um, where the middle divide is, um, give you more of an idea of like the first half of the story to the second half. And like, if this was an animated movie, you could see this like three quarters of the way down, uh, Diana struggling and snapping vines, but they're all like pulling at her and, Ivy just standing there like it would, this would be an awesome, it's, it's an awesome shot here. Um, but Diana, uh, I do not want violence, but I can crush your face. If this attack continues, um, I can, and I can command fungus to rot your brain thorns, thorns to seed in your eyeballs. Um, Harley. Yes. You're both very formidable and intimidating. Let's take it down a notch. Um, what does Diana want here? Um, no, I'm here because I have, uh, more faith in her than my mother does. Um, in Zala, she's here for Zala. Um, she's been accused of something that would tear our kingdoms apart. Uh, and Zala, what have I been accused of? Uh, they, (laughs) they could hear the, the scuffle going on. So they came to investigate. Uh, she releases uh, Diana, and her and Diana go to speak in private. King Pierce says, you killed his son. She says, what? So you didn't? If I murdered a child, I think I'd remember. And they say, we need, the uh, world needs us to So together. here we get Zala saying right that she did not, the same that she didn't kill him. Um, which is... Um, yeah, which is really cool. Um, obviously Diana is, is a, is a person you want to have on your side, (laughs) no matter what side you're on. Uh, you definitely want that. And then, and then, you know, fighting a war with Kryptonians. Uh, we got master Grayson. Um, did you find the falling star? They found something. Um, which is kind of cool, you yep. know. They we got back in that other issue means we had um, they they introduced uh, yep. a Jimmy Olsen. We have Stephanie and um, like I said, they the Robin, not sure who the other person was Tim yet. But or if it's Jason. Most people are somebody. Uh, maybe it's Tim. No, Tim. So. Tim has had a Tim's hidden in Jefferson's court, isn't he? So I think that was Jason. Um, but then we have Kal El and Bruce. Um, and they're talking. He says, "I, I believe think the so." Star came from Krypton, and Bruce basically says, um, "Jarrell told me more months before he died. He told you what? I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want you to think less of our father. I didn't want you to feel shame for it too." Then turn the page, and Kal El stabs Bruce with kryptonite. In the chest. Yep. He says, this is our world. He flies up. There can be no challenge. Which he's holding barehanded in his uh, chest, puncturing it through his ground. armor. Um. Uh, boom. Bruce is in a crater. And just happen along, it seems to be a farmer and his wife. It's the Batman, honey. Is he still breathing? And um, they take off the mask. They pull out the kryptonite. He screams. And he says, he's not what he's supposed to be. No. Let's get him to the palace. No palace. Put him on the cart. Then what? You want to take him home? Yes, Jonathan. It's what we do with lost souls. Your compassion will be the death of us one day, Martha Kent. So the kids, so when I first read this, I told you I was, I was mad, you know, cause I was like, look, I'm tired of Batman being the only thing that ever matters. To Next, the Kents. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Batman in this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Batman is now getting raised and helped by the Kents. He is a prince. He. No matter that he has 40 son, books so a month. Kryptonian powers <laughs> still BA as the Batman. <laughs> So, um, 
I'm just like, man, come on. And Superman looks bad. But like you were talking, looking through this again and reading it, something's up. Because Zala and Cal, um, they aren't, they're either being controlled or imposters. Yeah. Imposters. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's very, it's, yeah. I mean, the, the Zala thing comes straight out. And then, and then this, this here at the end with, with Cal, this is, um, this is another twist, like a, a twist ending. Um, how, uh, where, where do they, why is he making yeah. this, you know, why is he stabbing him? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think imposters, um, I think the green man could be um, something more than just, than just one thing. You know, I mean, when you, when you think about it, it's, there was um, green arrow and then there was green lantern. Um, You know, I mean, we get like uh, Martian Manhunter, you know, possibly shapeshifter. He's a green man. Um, yeah, like if Martian Manhunter and, and Lex and, and Green Arrow, I mean, it's, it could be, um, like a whole type of conspiracy thing here, um, or some mind control. I don't think it's a possibility, you know, obviously some sort of mind control or spell or something, um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't think, I don't think what Man, we'll find what is happening is is, is yeah. as it seems. Let's jump over. That's for sure. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. You find all of our information right there. If you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show. Like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast. So did you pick up the Earth Prime Superman and Lois book? I did. All right, let's do that one. I have it right here. Which is cool, you know. I really enjoyed this book. Yeah. Did you, I, by any chance, read um, the number one, the Batwoman? Nope. Ah, I have. Nope. I have because it's um, there. I'm reading. I'm actually going to read them all because it's a um, it's an overarching story that connects all of them. Ah. Uh, I was hoping it was just. Individuals. Oh, well. Individual. Well, I mean, they're individual as in like they're for each show, but there is a, a connecting, um, a connecting bit. I want to ask you one question before we read this. Mm. What the H is up with this cover art? I I don't even know. Um, because the cover art is gnarly. And then I open it, and it's completely different art. And I like the art inside. Yeah, the uh, that that um, cover art looks like uh, like a young adult uh, graphic novel cover art thing, or a child's crap uh, cover art thing. Yes, a child's. I like that. Yes, yes, good, good. But let's open it up to the anniversary i like this story um clark comes downstairs and the boys are there and they even they made sure they gave clark the five o'clock shadow 
at all times. Yeah, that Tyler has. Yep. That's what separates this as not being just Clark Kent. This is the Tyler Clark Kent because he's got the constant five o'clock shadow. And uh, they talk about why they celebrate their anniversary four days after they actually got married. Yeah. He has the five o'clock shadow, even though he um, is using the the Kryptonian mirror to bounce his, or the Kryptonian metal or whatever to bounce his heat vision off. To shave, to yeah, shave. Yeah. <laughs> but I like how you see like he's shooting it, but you don't see it like bouncing to actually shave the face. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. But what I like is I like that it's like three sixty five days after the wedding, and Clark shows up and he gives her flowers and they're talking. It's like, a, you know, the one page is six panels plus one <clears throat> big panel at the bottom. So it's a seven page panel. And they're talking about they have a reservations. Don't be late. I wouldn't miss it for the world. You turn the page. Well, and then the opposite uh, one is is one panel, uh, one large panel, and then three smaller panels underneath. Yep. And Superman's fighting robots. and uh, He's fighting he's- the mechanical monsters from the Fleischer cartoons. Man, you told me. yes. <laughs> I was going. To, I was like, I sorry. Was going to, nah, nah, you're fine. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's dope. It is totally because at the bottom, if you look at the TV in the background of the restaurant um, where Lois is waiting, like you see, like the burning buildings, the Superman symbol, then Lois leaves, and then on the next page, same setup: three on the top, one on the bottom. Three sixty-six days after the wedding, Clark's trying to make up to her for missing. It's, you know, the same kind of thing, but like little things are inverted. Like this time, um, Clark is in the shower while Lois is at the mirror. They're walking to work. And here's what's funny. I don't know if you caught this. The one panel, Clark is wearing a red shirt under a blue suit. Then the bottom panel, he has a red tie with a white shirt in that blue suit. Oh, yeah. Um, Same poses, you know, um, Little things are different. Like the people in the office are in different positions and stuff. So just little things. Enough that makes it the same, but enough that makes it different as well. It's like, see you tonight. And then we go, same setup, one large panel. Uh, you know, three at the bottom. This time Clark is at the restaurant. And Lois is trying to fix the printer at the Daily Planet. Clark meets uh, Stan, one of the waiters. The waiter trips and is about to drop his plates and uh, glasses. Clark catches him. Uh, and, of course, Clark makes a friend. So now we're at 367 days after the wedding. And it's kind of the same setup once again. They're talking. Uh, maybe they'll never be able to celebrate. I like, and, I like how they kind of do the um, the bizarro joke that Clark had um, in one of the episodes where he's brushing his teeth and he can't, and it's spelled out all wonky. Yeah. <laughs> like he's talking with his mouth full. Maybe we should have accidentally drop right. Remember it well. <laughs> right. And uh, once again, you know, they're they're this time at the bottom, they're making plans, but they're busier because they're not looking at each other, holding each other's hands. Uh, I'll be there, I promise. You turn the page and boom, who's Superman fighting? A <laughs> nuclear man. That was awesome. I, I got excited. I look, I look, Janine, and she looks at me and goes, who's that? <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. You have failed. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's nuclear man from Superman 4. Yeah. That no one gives credit to. Well, you know, it's the that. second time he's been in comics in, in a few years. He was in the Phantom Zone in the Bendis run, and now he's... In Superman and Lois. I like it. And then at the three, you know, back to the three at the bottom, Lois at the restaurant, we see Superman fighting Nuclear Man on the TV. She's playing with a little car that she found that was in the printer press. Uh, it falls. And then she says, check, please. 368 days after the wedding, similar setup. Um, Superman's back in the shower. Clark is. And I like how they, now he's just wearing a white shirt, red tie, blue pants. Uh, it's crank co is the car. Lois is trying to piece it together. 
and they both have stuff on their mind while they're talking out loud to each other. Same time, same place tonight. We jump over. Big picture. It's Toy Man rallying a bunch of the villains together. Clark's at the bottom talking to Stan. Um, and then he says, Stan, don't won't let me keep you from your work. He says, nah, my shift ended a while ago. Oh, really? Then sh- sh- we should order some food. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I hear the very thick accent. Now you're talking, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, 369 days after the wedding, Lois is trying to make it up to Clark. This one, you know, back to someone's with the roses. Uh, Clark, Lois is in the shower. They're talking about work. And they find out that uh, Stan has them an open reservation for any time. We just both need to be there. <laughs> yeah. Which I love because that just shows like Clark's friendliness and personality draws people to him. And, you know, at any time can people, um, you know, Clark just has a magnetism to him. Right. He's, well, a, good, he's seemed, a good person. Yeah. It seems like it's one of those like romantic type restaurants, maybe one of those more expensive places where, you know, you need a reservation and mm-hmm. uh, that it may be tough to get a reservation there. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, we'll keep you a table. You both have to just come. <laughs> if you're both there, we'll get you a table. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah. I, I do I do like how they're having the the discussion about um like should they keep trying you know um, Clark is worried that because they're both so busy at what they do um, that it just may never happen he's kind of seeming discouraged but Lois um Lois is like no let's you know like she wants to do it she wants to continue trying to celebrate. Like yeah. she, she kind of, which is, which is something we get from Lois in this show is even though she, she by all rights, almost, you know, she, she half, she has a reason and she doesn't, you know, she has a reason to be upset when she needs to be upset. Um, but then she also understands that she doesn't need, that she can't be upset because of what he's doing. You know, um, they both understand that it's their lives and they make the best of it. Yep. And I would just be like, let's just celebrate right here with this anniversary coffee. Right. And us in the park. Anniversary lunch. Um, and then we get the next page is Superman saving the day. Um, and then we got Lobo holding up an old photo. It says, I liked your old outfit better. Thanks. My mom made it for me. Who are you? <laughs> the name's Lobo. And you're coming with me. Right. Um, so nah, I need your head? head. Looks like he's got, um, kryptonite in wrapped yeah. in his chain mm-hmm. and he snags up Superman and is dragging him away. Um, Lois has her meeting with, uh, I believe it was the mayor. Yep. About, um, the, thank you for your time in Candor. Always happy to help me on the record about the good people in Metropolis. She gets a report about Bruno Mannheim on the way to meet his political puppet. Dun, dun, dun. She checks her watch and she takes off. And then next scene we got is um, Bubba Gump Shrimp on uh, Asteroid AMDS-17. And Clark is like, where am I? Edge of the solar system. You know, Earth is pretty terrible, but this place you call Florida, not bad. Like, it's uh, been ripped off of Earth and placed on this asteroid. What do you want from me? Some redhead broad paid me a fragging ton of money to bring you here. Popcorn shrimp. And then he breaks the chains and just punches him. Uh, meanwhile, Lois is at the restaurant. Place sees, decides to put a disguise, which took me a moment to realize she put on the blonde wig. And sees Bruno Mannheim and who walks in but the mayor and then she gets a picture gets in says gun it we see a shot of the restaurant Superman's flying back from outer space both of them are running down and uh, 
says, sorry, we're closed. And they get there. And they're both talking about how they tried their hardest. And he's like, well, I might know a place that's even better, still serving dinner. And then we cut back. (laughs) And it's Jonathan and Jordan. And they're like, wait, hold on. You're saying that every year you guys fly off to Hawaii for dinner? Come on. Even I know they're messing with us. And then there's Superman holding Lois as they fly to Hawaii. (laughs) Happy Happy first anniversary. anniversary. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So the next story I think is really interesting. Um, It starts off where we see Smallville and there's Jonathan walking with Clark. We see a boy almost get hit by a school bus and Clark's speed by and saved him. And Jonathan's, what were you supposed to do, Clark? Just let him get hit? And then he says, uh, Clark talks about having so many fond memories with his father reading the paper. Uh, one of the, for his father's favorite movie was about reporters. I think it's all the president's men, I think. Robert Redford. Um, about their ex- determined to expose the truth. He said that made a deep impression on young Clark. Um, dad's been gone a long time, but now I need, I know where to go. We see Clark saving a helicopter. We see the suit, a very Fletcher suit. Um, he's at the daily planet. He buys a paper and, uh, Dad taught me there are many ways to make the world a better place. Thank you. I miss you. And he leaves a copy of his first byline at his father's grave. So I thought that was just a really good short story. Remind me of the type of story that should have appeared in like the Superman red and blue that we read. Right. Yeah, that's a very nice one. Um, This next story is not quite as nice Um, called controlled burn. Uh, and he is talking about when he was a, a child um, and he says, uh, Jonathan says, before every season, we set fire to what's left of last season's crop. The fire clears away the dead crops to make way for the new. It's called a controlled burn. Um, they're out watching fireworks and on their way back, um, they get hit by uh, a semi and Clark is the only one to have survived. Gets put in a foster home. Mm-hmm. An abusive and, foster home. And then it says that after a while, he couldn't take the hears of the slap, the tears, and the stuff the other boys didn't notice. Um, and we see the, I guess the foster dad, like throwing the foster mom. And he says, before we realized what he was doing, he, he just annihilates him with his heat vision. Yeah, it looks like he just turned him to ash. And then, of course, she's saying, stay away, free monster. He runs off. He gets arrested. Um, But there's no place that can hold him. When he busts out, he finds the rocket that brought him here. Looks very Man of Steel rocket. Yes, it does. Finds his... uh, Sunstone. Sunstone, yep. Yep. Um, And this is interesting. Uh, The crystal constructed... This refuge in the Amazon, making it possible for the boy at last uh, to at last have a home after years on the run. Um, so it creates this fortress in the mountains in uh, in the Amazon. Um, he, and we see Jarrell. Yep, he meets Jarrell. He uh, starts to train with him. Um, very, uh, uh, his powers were pushed to their limits and then beyond. And then when you turn the page, we see that it's the black suit Superman. And then it all makes sense that this is the story of the Superman from the world that John Henry is from. Yep. John and Natalie are from, um, he saves the day. He's, he's, uh, doing a lot of Superman stuff. Um, but he's also, he's also all by himself. Um, <laughs> Kal-El accepted their validation. It was further proof of the of the righteousness of his crusade. And then it, all of a sudden it shows up his brother, Tal, Tal shows, up, shows up and he convinces him that for all the good you have done, Superman, human evil persists. 
It's their very nature, a disease it needs cure of. Join me and we can restore our lost Kryptonian kinfolk. I don't think he would say kinfolk, but whatever. Yeah. It, it only requires the sacrifice of your most troubled some humans. And Superman says, two decades of leading by example have failed to change their nature despite my best hopes. And then it shows them starting their controlled burn. Yeah. Which is interesting, though. Um, you know, we kind of thought that um, because of the first season that uh, Superman on their Earth might have been taken over by Zod because of, like, the parallels. Well, tells, yeah. Um, that we were drawing. But in this story, that's not the case. Um, this story, this Superman grew up in in much more of an Ultraman fashion. Not yeah, entirely, nice little, but... It's a nice little hybrid of the two. Yeah. But he's still... He just doesn't hold... He just doesn't hold the same morality. And then we see the last page is a nine-panel grid of him burning, and then the scene of him punching John's ship as John tries to get away. And then the last two panels is somebody's watching. Yes. And says, yes, Kal-El will serve my needs nicely. Dum, dum, dum. And yes, this is the, these two panels here is the connective tissue. Um, because in the Batwoman panels uh, at the end, there is somebody speaking to the villain who is now locked up in Arkham. Um, speaking to the villain from the shadows um, and and in a similar way. All right. Similar Sorry. silhouette and everything. Last book that I have here for today is Batman Superman World's Finest number two. Day of the Doom Patrol. I'll let you lead this one. <clears throat> uh, so we, we open up uh, with Superman on the operating table. Um, Dr. Calder and Robot Man here. Um, they uh, they open up Superman's chest. Uh, like they, they cut him open and he tells to he tells Robot Man to um, spread the rib cage. Um, it, Superman's like insides are like glowing. Um, Elastic Woman shows up, scares the crap out of Robin, which is kind of funny because, you know, they're trained to not get snuck up on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's very focused on other things. Because I'm Batman. <laughs> Lady, I'm in a creepy old mansion full of walking mummies, taxidermied aliens, and giant eyeballs floating in jars. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so Larry, get in here now. Uh, Calder says, uh, we were wrong. It doesn't matter what color it is, red, green, or tartan. The kryptonite is rapidly toxifying Superman's blood. He's got minutes to live. Uh, transfusion too slow. Uh, he doesn't have that equipment. And negative man, there's a chance uh, that his radiation can art art alter that of the K particles uh, to something harmless. Uh, Batman says, purging Superman's circulatory system from within. Um, the negative man's power only lasts for one minute, and there are 60,000 miles of veins and arteries in the body. Can he beat that deadline? Uh, and he's just like, do it. Calder says, yeah. go. We'll find out. And it is working. Superman, Batman's standing on top of him. He's like, come on, Cal. Yeah. We've been through hell together. You've got this. Yeah. Batman looks very concerned here. So we've got a very concerned look on his face. Um, he says, you don't just do the impossible. You make it look easy. And then negative man comes. Mongol. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which still waiting to see. <clears throat> CW or WB. <clears throat> I told you my pitch. <laughs> um, and Superman wakes up. And it's funny, uh, Elastic Woman, is Batman smiling? It says, it hap Robin says, it happens. And you accuse us of looking spooky. Yeah, Superman's like, what? What was that? <laughs> yeah. He 
just don't let Batman in. It says a few weeks, and it says later. They're all sitting there, and uh, Superman's just chilling, drinking some uh, uh, tea or coffee. I'm going to say tea based on the cup. It says, and Batman's talking, or Niles is talking. A few weeks ago, my Doom Patrol liberated an item of interest from a madman named Saul who had been studying it himself. And they, they're going through it, and then Robin looks at Superman and says, why are they talking over each other? Superman's like, this is what happens when you put two men who hate not being the smartest guy in the room together in one room. Yeah, I like how they're talking over each other in the explanation. We learn about the sword, and the sword of the legend of Niza. 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 That's how I say it. Niza. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, it's, uh, they, they are, uh, Jap- uh, Chinese names. So, y- you know, it never actually is pronounced how, how, or it's not, it never sounds how we would pronounce it because they just don't have the same, yep. um, same, exactly. uh, sounds for, the letters <laughs> my point exactly so yes like like this like this li jing it's probably like ye like li ying yep and they or talk ye. about how it was the sword originally belonged to neza the son of chinese most powerful warlord li ching despite his military might li jing couldn't keep his son from dying in battle and then each one, each member of the Doom Patrol takes over and talks more. I do think it's interesting how they drew, how they drew Robot Man just wearing like basically his own Spanx, <laughs> not give him a full outfit. Um, so distraught over his loss, Li Jing, that he ordered Neza's body to be preserved and possibly uh, effective as possible. And this is he abandoned. He traveled. He found a, a, someone that could bring his son back to life. He eventually. Reduced to servitude, scrubbing the floors uh, to repute the magician the faint hope of caring for his son. Years pass. Li Jing's uh, ravaged fingers could barely lift his his dinner spoon anymore, but he refused to abandon his quest. Eventually, the magician showed mercy. His reward was the elixir of eternal life. Lee entered his son's tomb and admired the elixir. Huzzah! It worked. I just don't. I just can't hear Brandon Fraser's uh, robot man saying huzzah. Right. <laughs> I got a few other words in mind. Um, <laughs> Definitely. But it says, but pretty much forever. For the first decade in time, saw his dad's tear-stained face, heard his tragic story, and exploded. What have you done, you you stupid old man? We commanded the world and now whimper and cower. He had untold riches. Now we are paupers. So the sun wakes up, looks like a vampire with red eyes and fangs, and cuts his father's head off. <laughs> May I never be like you. So that's a thank you. <laughs> right. And then he became known as the devil Nasa. Yes. I see like he has a big devil demon looking head. And Superman at the bottom is like, magic. Hmm. The devil emblem is his insignia. If he was the power, that powerful, what stopped him from conquering the world? Then we have a scroll of warriors. The House of Yi. That were unable to kill him, so they imprisoned him. Um, and it says, the devil may, have, may somehow have been released or broken free. Superman says, either way, some of uh, someone's using our enemies to come at us, and we may be the only ones. Oh, you're not. Excuse me? I'll show you. And then my remote cameras indicate that Felix Faust is tormenting some boy just outside Philadelphia. In Central City, the Flash seems to be in trouble as well, while Wonder Woman and Green Lantern are. We find out that Niles has been keeping tabs on everybody. And he says, Robin, I need you to meet the House of Yi and learn firsthand exactly how they defeated Niza. What? <laughs> you know I left the bat time travel ray in our other utility belt, right? <laughs> and Negative Man's like, do you really have? No. Says Robin. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and then Supergirl shows up. No worries, I called a traveling companion for you. Supergirl. 
Robin. They say coldly. So mm-hmm. Problem, says Superman. Nope, says Robin and Supergirl. Nope, nope. I, I like Supergirl's. I like Supergirl's suit here. I do too. The red shoulders, capped off the red shoulders with the, the skirt. <laughs> yep. If you need a trained detective, off you go. And then we have Batman and Superman exiting. And he says, Calder, see if you can find Nisa and stay in touch. Superman and I have a child to save. And we <clears throat> go over to Fawcett. Fawcett neighborhood outside Fawcett. Philadelphia. Um, where, where he's finding a Faust... little boy named Billy Batson. Yep. It says Billy Batson. I was given no clue what a young boy's connection to the wiz- uh, is to the wizard Shazam, only that I was cautioned to keep you only silent. That I was cautioned, and that we see that his mouth is sealed shut. And Superman flies in and grabs him. Uh, Batman. Sorry, is my internet skipping on you a bit? It's that's kind of skipping my end. What? What'd you say? Oh yeah, you just. Oh, I said I'm so, sorry. Is my internet <clears throat> skipping on you? Billy. Oh, it was just a moment. We're good. Batman tells him to drop okay. the staff. You underestimate me, says Faust. He puts energy coils around them, uh, and then Superman starts to whistle, and. He says, I can't hear it. And he's like, you're not supposed to. It's an in, infrasound. Uh, the music, the military uses an audible weapons, but creating extreme vertigo and paral, par, paralyzing your muscles. Get Billy. Elsewhere, we find out that uh, Supergirl and Robin have some sort of history because she comments on his pants. Um, they need to keep professional. He says it was an accident. She says you're showing off, and you uh, and you know there'd be a monkey there, so we're not sure what happened with them. They're arguing, and then Supergirl's flying so far she breaks the barrier, and takes them back to the land to meet the warriors. They drop down to talk to the warriors. They are accused of being liars because they carry the sword. Um, it's interesting how they um, how she discusses you know uh, everything on earth leaves a tachyon trail that she can see and follow back through time with her x-ray vision that's awesome yeah which is just an interesting way it's a it's an interesting way of trying to explain how they can get to exactly where they want to go yeah it's not there's a flash or anything um and then you know, they're back to, you're going to tell us how to cure Billy. And Faust says something about misdirection. And then all of a sudden, Batman, Billy, and Superman are basically in a hill-like place. So, and that's where it ends. Um, interesting story. Definitely changes up from last time. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm. I like. I'm. I'm more interested in the Robin and Supergirl stuff. What's their history? Yeah. Why is she so mad? <laughs> I I do like that that little conversation of you're wearing pants now, because um, he still has like the little elf booties on with the little wings on them. Yeah, he does. So it's it's kind of like this is like a like Robin who's just who who's put on pants now. Like we we know the Robin who wears the tiny shorts. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, I'm growing up. I I think I need to wear pants instead of walking around in these fairy boots and tiny shorts, <laughs> which is kind of disturbing that that's the costume that Batman put him in. But whatever. I mean, yeah. Like, can we can we get past that like costume? <laughs> Do you have to like keep going back there? Right. I'm like, why why people? But yeah. So that's pretty much caught up on most of the Superman based comics that we've been kind of <clears throat> reading together and lots of good stories, you know, lots of good stories. Uh, I, other books that I've read, 
is I did get the Flashpoint Zero like you recommended. Um, that was pretty interesting. I have done... <clears throat> I've been reading the Batman Killing Time, which is a very interesting book. I got it because it's six issues, so and it's interesting plot how it's jumping like, and it gives you kind of a date and time, like at two weeks ago at three thirty-five p.m. Blah 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 happened. Um, it's interesting. Hmm, very cool. I mean, I'm looking forward to the. Um... Oh, I forget. I think they said it was a six issue arc coming out for Young Justice. Yeah. So I'll be interested to check that out and talk talk about that as it relates to the show. And the last thing we or we talked about talking about was just kind of touching in on Young Justice. The new season. It just it just wrapped up. It's I like this season a lot. <clears throat> I feel like they cut some corners production wise by doing those episodes and those parts where it was just like still images with narration. <laughs> uh, um, but I actually look forward to rewatching this entire se- season. Yeah. When it's over. Yeah. The <clears throat> way, the way that they, the way that the, the story arcs overlap, like they show you who's doing what, and it's all like, running parallel Mm -hmm. Um, we just kickstarted the new gods arc um where we have characters on new genesis yeah which i'm loving and i have a it it gives me an uh a more interest a connection and more of an interest in rocket as a character in young justice here Um, yeah they've actually started to develop rocket as a character. Yeah. She, she has an autistic son, which I also do. Um, so just the beginning of that first episode of this arc, like, like that freaking hits home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that cold open before the credits. So good. So with, good. with Amistad. Yeah. With Amistad. So good. I love it. Um, and I, I like, <clears throat> I like it because it's it's touching real matters with these characters and we're getting to know these characters. Um, and then Orion, this is the first time I've ever watched something where I'm actually like freaked out by Orion. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's scary, man. Um, like Usually I'm like, oh, yeah, Orion, hero. This I'm like, oh, crap, Orion's scaring the poo out of me. Right. Well, and and you had you had brought that up to me too, and and I had told you what I read in the very early um, part there of uh, Jack Kirby's New Gods. Um, like in one of the early issues, um, they're talking about how the Mother Box um, helps to quell uh, Orion's inner rage, and even and, and it even like alters his appearance a little bit. Um, which you can actually see in Young Justice as well when his helmet is off and, and he's kind of in a rage. Like, mm-hmm. like he, he needs the mother box to help him um, like maintain a sense of control of himself. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they're pulling from, they're pulling from the very beginning uh, with some of these characters, but the, the, the character development um is just yeah. I mean, every single character I think is. I think they write them with, with their history in mind. You mm-hmm. know, um, these characters are established and have done things and are, and they have layers. Even if you only see them for a handful of minutes of screen time at a time. Another big point in this one that I like. Is we got to meet Razor. For those who watch the Green Lantern animated series, which is a really good animated series, Razor comes back. It, well, he, yeah, that's where he was created. The only place he's ever yeah. existed is Green Lantern the animated series. So now he's in Young Justice, where he was a where his. I don't want to spoil him, but he is both a red and blue lantern. Yeah. Um, well, because at the end of. Green Lantern, the animated series, he flies off. He's wearing his red ring and a blue ring follows him. Follows him across the stars. So does that make blue that this 
is now connected to that series. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, basically. Well, so there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things with this show. Um, something we got last season um, in season three. I'm fairly certain. No. Was it the first part of this season? I haven't watched I it. I tried to block out remember. season three. I can't I try to block out season. Three. You know what? I think it was the beginning of this season during the Artemis arc. Um, yeah, it was because that's when they, um, when they tell you how Oracle got paralyzed, how Barbara got paralyzed. And it wasn't a Joker shooting her through the belly. It was, um, mm. Cassand- it was Cassie. It was yep. Uh, or Cassandra, yeah. not Cassie. They're two different people. Um, yeah, it was it was Cassandra Kane. It was her standing up to try to protect her so that she wouldn't go down the dark path. Yeah, as an assassin. Um. Uh. So there, there's a lot in this world that exists, but there are small differences, small changes. Like, like the the idea of when Robin became Nightwing, um, they discussed how in this world it wasn't, um, it wasn't a a contentious thing between him and Batman. You know, it's more that he grew up and moved on. Um, mm-hmm. and, and now we know that Barbara is paralyzed, but for a different reason, not the killing joke. Um, so it could be a very similar thing with, with razor, you know, um, true. He, he true, true. I mean, is it, is it set in the same universe? Hey, possibly, but we at least know that it's very, it's a very similar experience, you know, I mean, basically. Yep. So, and then um, the last big kind of ooh, yeah, thing the, the big part, the, the biggest part we're in, we're most interested in, <laughs> is we now find out more history that Drew Zod is in the Phantom Zone. He's talking to spoilers, people, that uh, Connor is in the Phantom Zone. Yes, he's not dead. He's in the Phantom Zone. And we find out what the Legion's mission was and how that chain connects to Lorzod, Druzod's son. Who is the person in the time sphere. Um, who is working for Darkseid, who is the one who tried to kill the Superboy, because the Superboy is the one who um, creates the United Planets. Yeah, inspired the Legion, um, inspired the United Planets. Um, and the Legion are the people who uh, trapped Zod's family, Drew, Drew Zod, and, back, and everybody. Back in the Phantom Zone. Back in the Phantom Zone, yes. Because they were released. And because the last Phantom because they weren't supposed to be in there forever. But when Krypton exploded, they were stuck in there. And um, yeah, nobody to grant parole. Zod's wife. I don't think they say who Zod's wife was, if it's Feywa or, or Ursa or what. I cannot recall. I just kind of go with Feora. Yes, I kind of do too. Um, she was pregnant without knowing it when she got put in the Phantom Zone. So as soon as they were released, she gave birth to Lorzad. Eight months they later. Didn't have, um, they didn't have their powers. Um, because they were um, released put, on Daxum. Yeah, uh, and their planet with and a red started, sun, and then they fled it to a planet with a yellow sun. Zod wanted to overthrow, and that's how he ended up back in the Phantom Zone. And now, Lor Zod. Oh, of course. I mean, this, he's a power this. hungry despot. <laughs> oh, speaking of Superboy, he's up. Hey, Superboy. Hi, Daddy. H- hello. Hey, Solomon. James says, "Hey, Solomon." Jay. I've been doing good. So he's up. Yeah, <laughs> he's awesome. A, he's about to hit a growth spurt. Just side note, I can tell because <laughs> one, he's sleeping more, and two, he's eating more. Yeah, his appetite is grown, so he's about to. <laughs> yep, grow about again. to sprout up like a weed. Um, but yeah, so that's Young Justice, and where we're at. I'm excited to have a really good, thorough conversation once it's over. 
Yeah. The um, the curious thing I'm I, interested in is like, is Phantom Girl gonna wake up in the Phantom Zone and realize who that is and like That's my thought. That is my thought. Yeah. And that's how they're gonna figure it out. And I'm curious if they're gonna be able to get Connor out. Or if he's going to be like stuck in the Phantom Zone, kind of in a sense of never to allow Zod to escape. So, I don't know. But that's where we're at. Any final thoughts from James the Man Cole? Oh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm loving, I've always loved Young Justice. Um, I know you're not the biggest fan of season three, but I thought it was, um, I thought it was pretty good. Um uh, it, it it was definitely it was definitely brought back you know to to the fans who petitioned to bring it back you know what i mean like right. we had grown up what 8 years or something um 6, like six to 8 years or something like that from the la- from when it was canceled on cartoon network i want to say the first back. season was like 2011 the second season was like 2012 Something like that. Yeah, and it didn't come back till like what twenty eighteen. Yeah, something like or, that. Yeah, or maybe years. early nineteen. I forget when it dropped. Yeah, I don't remember when it dropped. But maybe it was. Maybe it was nineteen because DC Universe didn't premiere till the fall September of September eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, and it was launched with Titan, so it'd have to be early nineteen. So it it was definitely back brought back for the people who saw it and who grew up. And and I think they wanted to bring it back with a a more mature fit, feel for those for those fans that that got it renewed. And I, I mean I agree with a more mature, but I think they went a little too far because it lost some of the fun element. Uh, and Forager says to Forager that Forager and Forager here that Forager and loves Forager and Forager is <laughs> going to help Forager make breakfast with Forager and Forager <laughs> while Forager's upstairs taking the dogs out with Forager. <laughs> If you have no idea what I just said, you are welcome to the club. Because basically I was saying that James and I are talking while my son, my daughter, and my wife make breakfast and take the dogs out uh, before that my son and daughter go outside to play with the neighbor. And James and I sit here keep talking. <laughs> right. um, but all of our names are Forager because that's how Forager talks. Yeah. the If if you watch season three, you'll find, you know, there's no pronouns in their language. They don't. Which is fine. Yeah. Which is fine. But it, that would just be like you and I talking. And I would say James every time. But when they're all named Forager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the heck, man? Like, did you just forget to name characters? I'm like, you know what? This will make people mad. Let's name all Forager. <laughs> and the young ones are Larva. Yeah, that was at least e- interesting and easy. <laughs> right. Uh, it's like when I played soccer in college and we had like three different mics on the team. So we just like, okay, we're all going by your last name now. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's how we did it. Yeah. Um, young Justice is fantastic. And um, yeah, this, they, this need to especially. Do, they need to keep going. They, they do. And that's why... I, we're trying to wear Brian down because Brian doesn't want to watch it because he really hated last season. And I get it. I really do. But I'm like, dude, you have to watch this season. This season's so good, especially the way they've done the arcs and they've really been able to like take time to focus on certain characters for a few episodes. I don't feel like I'm missing as much as last season where I'm like, I don't care about Brion. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of, uh, I mean, it, it kind of seems like season three was building, like it was world building um coming back again but uh you know we're everybody's so used to when they're watching shows especially ensemble casts where they're always bouncing back and forth what's this person doing what's this person doing what's happening over here what's happening over there um and this season is structured in a way that what is happening with this group you watch it from beginning to end and then they go yeah. back. What's happening with this group? You're watching it from beginning to end, so you get that. You get to see that fully play out with the and people Forger's that they're surrounded with. This. Yes, Forger appreciates this. He can at least call himself Greg, Jet Bug, Fred Bug, or whatever. Like, yeah, just to help me out here. Fred Bug but. with two G's. <laughs> Fred Bug with two G's, not Fred Bug, like Luke Bug, our friend Luke Bug. Yeah, with two yeah. G's. I almost start calling him like, "Hey, Luke Bug with two G's." Yeah, you're gonna have to do that now. <laughs> every time, how, every time, just like Forager Bug with two G's. Um, but I just want to say this: this has been the Krypton Report. 
Thank you for listening. We want to thank our Patreon members who have joined our dollar Patreon. We are constantly expanding that. We have new shows that came out this month that are just for patrons. We have new shows planned for next month that are just for patrons. It's $1 a month to hear us talk about movie commentaries and anything that comes up. We've got some and plans. We've got some We plans. have plans. We have some plans. Uh, one plan that we've been talking about forever, but we just haven't had time because life. And so it's just a dollar a month. Give it a try. Try for a month. If you don't like it, that's okay. Uh, we'll be sad. But yeah. That one, we, that, that one plan, it'll be nice as, as a Patreon thing. Cause we get to do like one episode a month, <laughs> you know, draw, draw that out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> draw it. We can do it. We that's, can do that's it why. just one episode a month, draw it out a little bit. And then, James and and then I we can get there. <laughs> James and I have the next, hold on. Let's do some quick math. <clears throat> Quick math, Tyler. Um, for those who are listening, what is he, Tyler, doing? Math. It's a wonderful thing. So I wish I could do math faster, but I can't. <laughs> if for I... the next 27 years, we have our Patreon plan. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> for the next 27.5 years, 0.25, so... 27 years in a month or something. We might have to double it up here and there, but for the next two decades, almost three, we have Patreon planned. Yeah. At least one episode of our Patreon planned <laughs> every month. One <laughs> At least one. So from James and I, have a great day. Hope you have great weather like we are. Enjoy it. Get out. Uh, if it's windy, put on a cape and stand outside and let the cape flow in the wind. And remember. Look out for the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.